All right, it's time for another exciting episode of the Josh Cast. Josh Cast. I think that's a good intro theme. I'm playing. I'm playing with different intro theme songs, uh, and what I like about that one is that it just it conveys um, the obsessive and the compulsive, and the anxiety and the depression. I think it's all all in one simple. Uh, Shot. It's kind of like what the soundtrack to a Batman film would sound like if Batman was played by, well, me, I guess. There we go. Which, uh, which would be very disappointing for the fans, I think. The whole reason we go see a Batman movie is so that we see someone who is put into a stressful situation and responds with kung fu as opposed to calling an attorney. So I was very gratified uh, to... I So I was very gratified. I'm hating myself already for that phraseology. I'm hating myself for using the word phraseology. All in all, it's, this is good. It's a very self-hating beginning for this podcast. Uh, makes sense. Another cloudy day in Los Angeles. The clouds don't help with the depression. Um, maybe I should be a weatherman. That might be fun. Hey, guys. Another cloudy day in Los Angeles, and there is no God. Hey, guys, it's sunny in Los Angeles, and maybe they will buy my screenplay about the first Starbucks in space. Hey, guys, it's sunny in Los Angeles, and uh, there is no God. That's really my entire life, what I just gave to you. Anyway, it was cool to see, all right, now when I say it was cool, now that, here's the problem with this. I'm dissociating my own emotions. It was cool. Well, for whom was it cool? I was excited to see, there we go, there we go. Now I'm owning my emotions. There it is. There it is! Pizza Hut Wing Street, there it is! Pizza Hut and Wing Street. At any rate, I was very excited to see that a few people responded, and by a few I mean two, still I'm excited, not complaining, uh, to my request to tweet their favorite science fiction film from 1980 to 2000. And two people responded, Um, and I'm about to talk about all that in a second, but uh, I feel like the next question for the next podcast should be uh, your least favorite cartoon growing up. Least favorite cartoon growing up. And I'll chat about that on the next episode, which may be tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. Hopefully I won't die in between. If I die in between and still am able to record the podcast, that changes everything we know about science. All right. Fifth Element and Ghostbusters. Those were the two movies that were tweeted at me. Fifth Element, Ghostbusters. First thing off the top. Interesting that those two were tweeted at me because what they have in common is that both take place in New York City. And that makes sense and that makes sense because New York City is where cool things happen both in life and in the movies. I've thought of, uh, the, uh, this is it's this was a bit I was actually working on, but it I, I've thought about this that that you want your Ghostbusters movie to take place in New York City because you want the state puff marshmallow man to be walking through New York. That's an iconic image that we all have. And the four guys, you know, shooting at him uh, uh, from the rooftops of New York, from, I think it was the Empire State Building. You want that. It is difficult to achieve the same visual effect by having the State Puff Marshmallow Man attack Aurora, Colorado, where I am from. And this, this is nothing against Aurora of Colorado. It's nothing against the fine people of Aurora, Colorado. But I just believe that we can all come to a consensus that it is less visually cool to see the State Puff Marshmallow Man ransacking the National Western Stock Show and Rodeo at the Convention Center. It's just, it's a little less sexy. Might not, 
you know, you, you got all these scared cows running around. My parents took me to one of those. The National Rest- Western Stock Show and Rodeo. And, and it was a situation where the three of us were standing there, and I believe all three of us concurrently were thinking, why are we here right now? This is really not our jam. We're not really horse, cow, cowboy hat, metal fence people. That's really not what we're about. What are we doing here? Why is this happening? But back to Ghostbusters. Uh, Best thing about it for me, uh, Bill Murray. Because what I love about, I mean, he's obviously funny, but but funny and what I like is that he, it's almost in a way like having the guys from Mystery Science Theater 3000 in the movie as it's happening. Because he's, just the way he comments on things as they happen, hilarious. I think it would have been better if Bill Murray had been one of the astronauts in 2001 A Space Odyssey. I think that would have been, now, you, now you've got yourself a movie. Just someone, and I can't do a Bill Murray impression, but just to have somebody just with that kind of attitude doing, all right, come on, Hal. Hal, come on. Hal, I've got my angry face on. Actually, better yet, I want Bill Murray to be inserted into the end of 2001 when the giant space embryo is flying towards the Earth. And I just want, I want him saying, you know, hey, this, that's a space embryo. <laughs> uh, and I think it'd be even funnier in that particular case if he was holding uh, some scotch on the rocks. Just saying, hey, hey, space embryo. 12 o'clock. The thing I don't understand about the Ghostbusters franchise, and I don't maybe I'm the only one who feels this way, but there's there has yet to be a Ghostbusters movie that I don't like. I've liked all of them. I like the first one, I like the second one, I like the new one with the ladies. And yet I go back and I read the reviews for the second one and a lot of them were really scathing. And I'm like, what What do you... You had the Statue of Liberty marching through New York City to fight the evil painting guy. What more do you want, America? What more do you want? What more do you need? I love the second... I think I watched... I actually watched the second one more more times over and over than I watched the first one. And it could, I think that I might have seen that one in theaters. I can't remember. Other cool thing I remember was that I had one of the proton packs when I was a kid, and those were awesome. You had a giant piece of styrofoam that you stuck into the, the muzzle of the proton pack gun, so it looked like it was shooting the, the, uh, the squiggly little energy bolt. The stream, the particle stream, if you were, that you were never supposed to never cross the streams. That's the one thing all children of the 80s remember. Never cross the streams. You don't cross the streams unless it's a situation where you have no other choice. Then you cross the streams. So I also remember the difference between the first one and the second one is that the first one they were all smoking. And by the time they got to the second one, it was no longer... Uh, I guess smoking had become enough of a health risk. Although I felt like everyone kind of knew that smoking was a health health risk by the early 80s. Uh, but I guess it took until the late 80s, early 90s for that to trickle into the social consciousness, oddly. But they, uh, but they were all, in the 80s, they were all smoking. But they'd all quit successfully by the second film. And good for them. Good for their journey. The thing about the Ghostbusters is that and, and a lot of ghost movies, is that the ghosts are always depicted as the bad guys. Of course, you have your exceptions, being Ghost, where he's the good guy. And a few other... I mean, technically, well, I'm, this is going to spoil the movie, What Lies Beneath, technically the ghost was the good guy. Um, 
And that just seems, I feel like, by and large, the ghosts would be way more calm and enlightened and, and rational because they've, you know, the one thing that obsesses me, I think obsesses most people, is death. And now that's, that's over. I'm just, I'm surprised there aren't more uh, chill ghosts. But then again, now that I say that out loud, now what worries me is that something after death, the undiscovered, undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, Hamlet, boom, hey, bah, liberal arts major. That maybe there is something about it that's uh, still bad. There's still fear or something. And that's maybe even worse than this life. And that's why they're freaking out so much. Now I can worry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Ghostbusters. The original theme song to the original Ghostbusters, written by Elmer Bernstein. Not, it was used in the, in the, in the, it, within the movie, but it wasn't used as the theme song of the movie. They used the Ghostbusters, that theme. But the original theme by uh, Elmer Bernstein. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. So that's a bit of trivia for you on Ghostbusters. Boom. It's out of the park. Ghostbusters. Fifth Element. All right. Fifth Element. Very enjoyable film. I saw that in the theater with my dad. I loved it. I think he tolerated it. <laughs> I think he liked it a bit. But I don't know that he was entirely thrilled with it. I think a lot of... I, I don't know what his thoughts were. Gotta say, awkward seeing a scene with a woman who's wearing, essentially, duct tape, sitting there with your dad. That's a little awkward. That's a situation where you want to be alone watching it and, you know, enjoying it a bit more. Uh, but still, excellent film. I notice with that film that it, there's an, there's, I don't know if the word archetypal is the right word, but there is, it's a recurring theme of there's this malevolent evil force and every so often it threatens the world and everyone's got to come together to stop the force. But, but more specifically than that, it's that every thousand years, this evil entity threatens the world. I think that was what it was. Every thousand years or every five thousand years. And that every time it threatens the world, the, the human race has to come together and they have to put the four elements together to create the fifth element. And the fifth element destroys it. So my first question is to the evil entity, why not change your timeline a bit? Throw them off. Wait, he's here a year early? We're not, we're not ready for this. No, he, the stones are all over the place. Ah, oh, God. Like, it's a really professional, malevolent entity. Second question. In the thousand years in between the time the entity is trying to attack the malevolent thing, the pure evil, what is the pure evil doing in its other dimension? Is it just kind of sitting there floating, existing? Just sitting there just kind of with this, ah, my evil, my evil, my evil. Is there anything else in the... There has to be someone or something. Here's, here's a thought for you. What if, in this other dimension, the pure evil is one of billions of people? Works as a chiropractor or something. Or not, no, not even a chiropractor. It's got to be something... Works as a, as a marketing assistant at a, at a market research company responsible for setting up the tables, which would explain the, the rage. The same job, can't get out of the job th every thousand years. And every thousand years, the one vacation is it gets to go into a parallel dimension uh, and try to kill Earth. And that's the one 
it's one vacation. What, or even better, what if to, to the malevolent entity's mind, what if it's uh, not even going into a parallel unit? What if it's playing a video game? There we go. Ho! And the entire world, universe of the fifth element is actually a video game simulation that's kind of like Pac-Man. And the malevolent entity is just the dude playing Pac-Man trying to get to the center of the map. I think I just blew your mind. That could be happening in this world. This could be a simulation. I think I've discussed this before, but if it is a simulation, I'll tell you. It's a simulation that's run on a Windows machine, Windows 5 or Windows 7. No, I think it's Windows 5. It certainly feels that way. This doesn't feel like a Mac situation. That's a depressing thought. What if it is a Mac situation and it could be that much worse if it was a Windows situation? A lot to unpack. This has gotten pretty philosophical. All right, well, I've arrived at my destination, so we're going to wrap this thing up. How do I feel about the podcast? Ah, I'm not feeling good about it. I feel I feel like it. It. Um, I don't feel like I completely opened myself up to the moment. That's what it is. That's what it is. I wanted to be a little bit more open to the moment and a little bit more open to what was was happening. But I'll do this. I'll share this dream. I I this I, I had this dream uh, last night because where I live right now, it's in a location where. As airplanes are leaving Burbank Airport, I'm seeing them essentially almost right as they take off. And it's very disturbing to watch it because Burbank Airport, apparently the runway at Burbank Airport is the length of uh, me. And so when they take off and land at Burbank Airport, they got to come in at this, you know, they got to land like they're landing on a friggin' aircraft carrier, come in steep, land, and then slam on the brakes and hope that they don't uh, crash into the city of Burbank. So it's very, um, it's very jarring. And so I, I, I ended up, I had this dream where uh, this plane crashed right near near me and I was with some people we were trying to I don't know we were trying to do something something was going on there was some mission I was on and this plane crashed and there's all this debris and we're trying to run out of the way of the debris it was very very stressful uh, because what I like to do is I like to fall asleep and then my brain says well we have to continue the stress we can't we can't give this boy a break and therefore, I had that dream. And that's... Uh, I'm still recovering from that this morning a little bit. So that's my... What, is, what, do, you think that, what do you think your unconscious is trying to tell you? To not live under a, a runway. I think it's pretty overt dream imagery right there. But it could be a, a sexual Freudian thing and a relationship thing between... No, 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 no. My brain is saying, don't... Don't be under the big metal thing. Don't be under the big metal thing. Thank you very much. Reminder again. Next podcast. Least favorite cartoon. Go.